in geometry a lot. Um, instead, you, you look at whether things are connected or separated. And uh, you can do a lot with that. You can, you can, um, it turns out that, that, that you can translate some of Einstein's equations into, into these sorts of shapes. And, uh, <laughs> and that's, that's the kind of math that I do. <laughs> What are they going to do with this math? Um, so, so this stuff is what uh, uh, quantum computing is based off of. It's sort of like regular computing, except you can do some. Uh, you can get your computer to do some things that classical computers can't do when you uh, when you involve the math that's used in quantum mechanics, and uh, that'll be huge for like national security, uh, code breaking, code writing, that kind of thing. The stuff that the that the NSA does at Fort Gordon uh, when we use quantum computing. And it also is weirdly related to theoretical physics and to, uh, to string theory, which is like an attempt at modeling the universe in really, really high dimensions. So it's, it's, it's interesting because it's, there's half of, half of the, the stuff you can do with the math is really applied. Uh, you could even like work for a tech company and, and be like a software engineer using this sort of thing. Um, and then the other half of it applies to really theoretical concepts that are super out there. Collisions of stars, uh, particles. That kind of thing. And so, Chase, you're currently at Northwestern in Chicago, correct? Yes. And you have this amazing opportunity at Harvard right. for a semester. Talk about how um, you fell into this opportunity, because I know a lot of things in life are being in the right place at the right time, or putting yourself out there. Talk about you know how how it all came together because these kids want to fall into something like this. Sure. Did perhaps your theater skills that you learned in high school? Oh yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. No. Um. Actually, actually yeah. Um, theater actually does have a, have a lot to do with how I was able to get this because it, it's all about presenting yourself and putting yourself out there. And um, I, I actually when I when I was thinking thinking about this about this talk and how I kind of got to where I was, I was thinking about all the all the failures that I encountered. Um, so I, uh, yeah, I, I originally got into this kind of thing because when I was a sophomore, I, I would, I liked to read a lot. I liked to read philosophy, and um, I uh, found out that you could uh, submit proposals to talk at different conferences about, about philosophy, and I, uh, I just kind of like stumbled upon like a, a few forms to fill out to. Um, to write proposals to speak at uh, to speak at these conferences, and um, yeah, when I when I was a sophomore, I, I, I sort of accidentally got one of those emails, and I, I replied to it um, with, a, with a proposal, and ended up getting accepted, and then I went to, to Houston to talk at this conference that, that was about space science when I was um, when I was still a sophomore, um, and I what what I got out got out from that experience was that you don't really, um, you, you, you can kind of fake it till, till you make it and put yourself out there and uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> you, uh, I guess my, my, my point is you'll, you, if you, if you try to have failures that you can be proud of, you'll you'll eventually end up landing something that like like an achievement, like like working at Harvard that you can be proud of. Uh, when I started like sending applications to speak at these conferences, I think I like my acceptance rate for, for these things is like fifteen or ten percent, really really small. I got I get rejected most of the time when I try to when I when I uh, submit proposals to to talk at places uh, like Harvard. Um, and if you if you can uh, if you can set goals, like just um, uh, auditioning for, for a role you don't think that you'll get, or uh, uh, sending an application into something that you don't think that you'll get, and if you do that um, again and again and again, uh, you'll uh, probably end up <laughs> with at least one success, um, but you'll, you'll definitely end up with a lot, of, a lot of failures and rejection letters that you'll actually look back on and be proud of, probably. 
Um, I was actually really, really proud looking back during high school at all the like no emails that I'd gotten from from like different colleges, different um, um, different applications that I sent in, because I I think that that's where I learned the most uh, to get me into the position that I am now. Just uh, learning learning from failure, learning why I failed. So. A lot of your emphasis is in the mathematical world. How did the other courses that you had to take impact your success in that arena? Um, places that you might not have thought you were that interested in, like English or <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So uh, they, I think all all my courses actually had a, had a lot to do with. The math that I do now, um, not not just any any of the math courses. That taught me like the basics that that I use now with, with the math that I do. But um, like uh, language, for example, I took I took Latin. But just learning Latin grammar helps out a lot with with the math that, that I do um, because it's sort of like a like a language where you just have to learn um, certain rules for how you can you can uh, like change words, conjugate them, decline them. All of that is actually really applicable to, to math. Um, English, for example, I learned I learned that research math, like the kind of the kind of math that you that you get a career doing, or that that, that a professor does at college, um, is a lot more like writing like writing a paper, writing an essay, than than anything else. Um, it's very creative. You have a set of ideas that you have to follow, a thesis that you have to back up in certain ways, and you do it in, with your own style, just like you would an essay. And I, I didn't realize that from doing um, from doing math in school. I liked the way that it was taught at prep, and I, I benefited a lot from from math classes here. But I um, I was never particularly interested in math, and I started out in CV geometry, <laughs> um, so I didn't have any talent for it either. <laughs> it was something that I fell into because I liked drawing things and and. Um, Honestly, professional mathematicians just get to like draw on a chalkboard all day and think. I get paid for it, um, and I and I like that. <laughs> Can I follow up with a question? Okay, so did this opportunity come from you speaking in Houston, or or how? Were you reaching out to professors? I mean, you talked about submitting applications, but how did the right. other application come? Right. Um, yeah, so it, it kind of a convoluted story. I, uh, when I was uh, a sophomore in college last year, I ended up giving a talk at, at Oxford, a philosophy talk. Um, again, just I, I like found one of those, um, one of those uh, uh, calls for proposals to a conference, and I uh, said something in, and then I was I was surprised that it got accepted, and um, and I, so I, I knew I had 48 hours to be in Oxford, England, and I wanted to do some fun things when I was there, so I uh, I just looked up um, I looked up interesting things people were doing at Oxford, interesting research going on, trying to find people I could talk to, and I um, I found out that there was this uh, group doing something called kindergarten quantum mechanics, where the entire idea was that you could uh, using using one of these picture languages I talked I talked about, um, you could get kindergartners to do some of the hardest math that you don't even touch in an undergraduate math curriculum. Uh, so you, you you could get them to prove Bell's theorem, which shows that quantum teleportation happens and is real. Um, and I, I was really fascinated by how they were they were able to do this with these this system of, of pictures. It just looks like squares and triangles, kind of like building blocks that you put together. And I, I just wanted to talk with them, so I um, I sent uh, one of the directors of the project an email, um, just blind email. Uh, didn't have any reason to to contact him, and um, he was super welcoming and replied in a couple of days. And we we talked a little bit while I was in Oxford about the kind of math that he was doing, I, and I thought it was interesting, and and um, I thought I'd just kind of keep tabs on it. And, and Every couple of months, I'd, I'd Google to see what they were doing with that, and I ended up finding that a group at, at Harvard had done um, something similar to the picture language that these Oxford people had been doing, um, except it, it had, uh, it was like a, a 3D version of it, so that, that you could actually like print out things, 3D printing, to play around with and, and prove math theorems, that kind of thing. Um, 
So I understood the same thing with, with these people, and I just emailed them without having a reason to, just, just contacted them, saying I was interested in their work, and I'd, and I'd be in, uh, in Cambridge for a few days, and I wanted to speak with them if possible. And um, surprisingly, they, they said yes, and I, I ended up meeting with these, these two physicists um, for about an hour and talking about some of their most recent work and some of this new picture language that they were doing, and they, they said that they were actually starting a project on it. Um, this past semester, and uh, uh, invited me to, to come join. And I, but I, I had no idea that the project was starting or um, that they were going to focus on this. I, I just, I just got this from from reaching out to somebody without having a reason to, other than me liking um, liking what they did, and being into it. Um, and there really aren't any boundaries with with contacting people. Like, like you could you could write a letter. To president, to, to the president right now, and it, it might not get a reply, <laughs> probably won't. But 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 you can, uh, you you can reach out to anybody you want to. There aren't any boundaries. Um, the only uh, the only reason that you have for not contacting them is something that you come up with, like being uh, being afraid of, of their response or or being embarrassed about maybe not knowing what the right protocol is for contacting somebody. But it's it's um, it's so worth it just to just to try. school about what you what you like the most genuinely what 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 interests you the most not what you think will make you money or uh, or, or lead you being successful and anything like that just just think a little bit about what you what you like doing when you don't have anything else to do um, even if it's even if you think that it's that it's dumb or, or that that it's uh, that it's silly that you can't do anything with it um, and then kind of check out what opportunities there are at, at college that, that correspond to that. Um, just Googling things, asking people, um, going to, uh, yeah, going to like uh, uh, activities, fairs, that, that, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, just, just talking with people who have the same interests as, as you is the best way to, um, to get involved in something that, you're, that you'll like. And uh, not being afraid to sign up for too many things either. Like you, you, you can sign up for 10, uh, 10 email lists um, for different clubs and you know, maybe only go to one of them ever <laughs> and, uh, um, and spend your time on that because you enjoy that and that's, that's totally fine. Um, yeah, so, so college really is a chance to explore something that you, that you like a lot and that you, um, that you would do if you didn't have to do anything else. Um, I'm totally free to do that. So that, that that's what I recommend. But it, but it, I, it, be patient with yourself if it takes you know like months or even like your first year or two of college to sort through um, finding something that you really do enjoy doing. I'm not sure finding a club that you that you do want to go to every week and, and that you aren't just putting on your resume. It's fine to it's fine to have things like that. It's it's fine to. Find to be disoriented and just have to be patient. So.
check inside yourself, like, are you really up for this? Sure. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so I, I did do a, a whole semester, basically, that was just an, an independent study. Um, the biggest part of that was having a, having a faculty member, having a professor that, um, that would, would give me work and that I would talk to um, almost every day, not every day. Um, so like having, having that kind of uh, relationship is, is how you start off an independent study normally, uh, but also the, one of the most rewarding um, parts of doing it. So I, I got to see, because of my independent study, um, what it's like being a, like being a career mathematician, something that I never, never ever imagined, even being interested in or, or even finding tolerable, like doing every day. I thought I, I, I genuinely thought it, that it that it was crazy that the, that I, I I was actually terrified of of holding eye contact with my professor, the, the the one I worked for for longer than five seconds at a time, at first, because it felt like he had all this like intellectual firepower that he was like, pointing at me, and. Um, uh, and I, I, I thought that he was going to like solve an integral and explode my head or something the first time that I that, that, that I met with him. It, but, but then progressively, uh, as I went on with the independent study over a couple of weeks of like getting lunch with with the professor almost every day or or talking with him every day, you learn that they're normal people and you um, you kind of get to learn the ins and outs of uh, of of uh, the I guess yeah the the career the field that they that they work in. And uh, particularly to math, I was surprised at how social it is. Most math research is just people talking with each other and running ideas past each other that they've, they've thought about a lot or, or drawing on, on a blackboard together. Um, uh, it's, uh, and then some of it is, is just solitary thinking, kind of like you'd imagine, just, just so, somebody like sitting in a chair and, and thinking really hard. Uh, but, but, but the point of doing that anyways is just to be able to talk about it with other people and just be able to like say like, hey, look what I've done, or hey, this is something cool that I found. Um, so I, I was shocked at how social it, it actually is. And, uh, um, and you can do this with, with anything, literally anything, that you can imagine. An, an independent study doesn't have to be in math. You can, you can just find a professor who you like or, or uh, um, in a field that you like and talk with them and uh, kind of figure out what they, what they do every day. And, and uh, an independent study is a really, really good opportunity to, to see what, it, what it's actually like to have a career like the person that you that you work for, and, and whether or not you actually want to do that after after college, um, and I never expected that, that I would that I would like math research. <laughs> um, so. so, what's your takeaway? Did, do you, are you going to continue with the math field, or are you going to go else, other directions, or you know? So right right now, I'm trying to stick with with math. Um, Mathematical physics, in particular, um, I'm uh, have an opportunity to go back to, to Harvard to get a, to finish off mathematical physics and get get a PhD in it. Um, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna gonna take that yet, just because it's uh, yeah, it's it's really hard. It's a lot of it's a lot of work. Um, the particular advisor I had, like we we would work for like six or seven days a week sometimes, which which is a little bit a little bit too intense for me. Um, but the uh, the upside of that is that you get a lot of freedom. Like you don't have to clock in or clock out at all if you work in work in academia, um, which is sort of, sort of nice. So the the plan for me now is to just keep keep exploring um, math and physics that, that I like in college, and, and um, for me to just keep keep doing what I have the most fun with, of course course wise, and uh, hope that that leads me to a good place for for graduate school, and then after that. I had no idea. I, I might um, want to work for research and development in an in industry, working for like a tech company. Um, Microsoft is doing really interesting things with quantum computing, and researching that. Um, there are also government opportunities, or, or just staying in academia, which I think would be would be comfortable. Um, so Chase, um, why don't you just tell us? That we have seniors here, all the way down to is it seventh grade? If you could change anything that you, um, while you were here, like if you had got, wish you had gotten involved in something, or wish you had done a different something, what would that be? That's a good question. Um,
you may need to preface that by telling them what you did do oh, while what I did, you were right, here. Because right. that, that kind of narrows yeah. your answer a little bit. Yeah. Something I'm really happy that I, that I did here was get, getting involved in uh, the theater program and getting involved in chorus. Um, I really suck at singing. I'm awful. <laughs> uh, and I, I actually, I was, I was really, um, before I joined chorus, I, I was a sophomore when I joined. I, I was like too embarrassed to sing by myself, even. Um, didn't, didn't like it at all. I, uh, I honestly just joined because I had a crush on one of the juniors in <laughs> chorus. And, um, but, but then I like turned it into an opportunity to, to work on having social anxiety and, and, and to get more comfortable with myself. Theater also helped majorly with that. Um, the, yeah, the, only, the only regret that I would have is not, not auditioning earlier um, or not, not trying to get involved in, in those things earlier, like freshman year. Uh, the only reason that I didn't was because I was scared and inhib inhibited and, and felt kind of embarrassed about it. Um, but I'm very happy that I, that I did that. And that, that goes for here for, for any, any activity that you're you know, just, just taking that first step can be really intimidating, especially when we have to audition in front of you know, Mr. Mack. So, so I, yeah, I, I got a lot out of, out of theater and, and chorus. And, um, Are you um, still able to do theater now? Uh, not, not really, not as much as, as, as I'd like. Um, at, at Northwestern it's hard because um, Northwestern has a really good theater program where uh, there are a lot of people who go there just to do theater. And they're they're incredible, and uh, um, and the, the time commitment is really massive for, for, for theater in college, like rehearsals, like five hours a day or, or something for, for certain plays. So I just haven't had the time to, to do that. But I have, um, I have still like gone to plays, gone to see musicals, and made friends, with people who who were in them, and that's been that's been really nice, really rewarding, and something that I never would have explored otherwise um, if I just hadn't taken a chance on. Talk to us about your summers in college. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, so uh, I've had some weird summers so far. Um, <coughs> last summer I was just sort of in, in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, I, I kind of had a reason to be there, um, but I, I kind of like not really. I was just staying in an Airbnb. I would emailed a couple of MIT professors in, uh, in math about um, a bit who were doing this like similar math to what I was doing about if I could meet with them and talk with them, and I ended up meeting meeting with them a few times, and I got to use like the the Wi-Fi for free on MIT's campus because I just asked somebody, and um, um, there's no rule against that, <laughs> or if there is, nobody copy. Um, so I, I just sort of did did that this past summer, and, and uh, uh, but the, but before that I, I studied abroad. Um, which was really interesting. I, I went to Bosnia and Serbia for a month each, doing a doing a public health program. Compared to a public health program, it has nothing to do with math or anything that I'm doing right now. Um, and I uh, I got to see how people recover from PTSD after major conflicts. Um, the program was in Bosnia and Serbia in particular because 70 percent of the population of the capital of Bosnia, Sarajevo, has PTSD uh, since the city was under siege for about four or five years in the 90s. Um, and uh, that was a really valuable experience for me because I thought that I was gonna, you know, go in and, and save the world and uh, um, uh, do a lot of like brilliant clinical psychology or public health stuff and, and figure out what was what was happening. And and I, um, yeah, I, I learned I learned how, how hard it is to deal with that kind of stuff. There was also the, the European refugee crisis happening in, in Serbia when I was there which was really intense because you had hundreds of people who had walked from Afghanistan, Iraq, and, uh, and Syria um, to Serbia trying to get to Europe where they could, they could uh, uh, settle down and, and have, have refugee status. So that was really interesting because that experience actually got me doing, um, got me doing math and, and doing the kind of reading math papers that, that led me to what I'm doing right now just because I was really tired of, of uh, yeah, I was, I was just tired of what I was doing on the, on the program. I wasn't having a good time. 
I didn't like all the uh, um, like all the applied psychology that I was doing, and I uh, and it was too much for me. Like it was just too much being 19 and seeing, you know, like uh, I don't know, like psychiatric hospitals with suicidal kids and things. It was awful. It was, uh, um, and uh, so so it, that that study abroad that, that I had um, the summer after uh, yeah, summer after freshman year was really a, another like really valuable failure <laughs> for me. Because I learned that I, um, yeah, that I really didn't like the, the major that I chose at that point, the, the field that I was going into, and I, I just accidentally, by 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 reading about about math as a way to take me into some kind of like abstract thing that was really uh, that really had nothing to do with all the stuff that I was seeing around me, um, that was really valuable. So, sort of. I mean, I, I um, yeah, I, I knew I liked psychology. I knew I liked liked people, and I thought um, I thought minds were really interesting. Um, I definitely knew that I wasn't taking any math or going to do any math ever. I, I thought that I was like done after after high school. Um, and honestly, psych psychology is what got me interested in the math that I'm doing right now because I was I was more interested in. in and I don't know, like looking at something like like all the stuff Einstein came up with, like how how gravity somehow curves light, really weird ideas like that that are counterintuitive, and that he got by doing some kind of like mental gymnastics and working with, with through all this math and physics. And I, I thought I thought it was interesting how people were able to do that, and and I, I was very interested in the psychology behind that, like how how it is that we're able to to think about things as as uh, like as abstract as that. So I actually. I was interested, yeah, going to college, I definitely thought I knew what I was interested in. I definitely thought I was going to do uh, just psychology all the way, maybe be like a clinical psychologist or something, or, or a kind of psychologist and study how people think. Um, and uh, when, I, when I started this program at Harvard a, a semester ago, I also thought I was going to be doing that. They tricked me. I told them that I wasn't, um, that I wasn't a mathematician, that I can't do proofs, that I can't do uh, any of the stuff that they, that they do, but that I was interested in how, in learning how they thought about it. And then they, they ended up tricking me by saying, oh, well, like, you, uh, if you're interested in how we think about it, then you should, you should learn to think about it yourself, so then you can, you know, like, you, you can think about how you think about the math. And then, <laughs> then uh, you know, that's doing psychology, right? Yeah. So, so I actually, yeah, I, I got into this doing something really opposite from, from math or, or physics at all. And, um, but I'm still happy that I pursued that, you know, at the start of college. But I pursued something that I, that I thought I was interested in and enough to, to be my major in and to be able to in college. And that's what led me to something totally unrelated, but still really interesting and, and fun, and that um, still gets me excited for the same reasons that psychology does, just because it's, it's uh, all math, all physics, all science. It's just something that came out of the human mind. In interaction with like the world, you know, performing experiments and, and everything else. But no science, no knowledge or anything would exist without somebody thinking about it and thinking about it in the same way, using the same mental faculties that you do. Um, Einstein said that scientific thought is the uh, is the development of pre-scientific thought. Um, every uh, all these these great scientists are, are they're literally just drawing squiggles on blackboards. And thinking about it hard, it's, it's just psychology. And it, but it, but it does take it does take a while, and it take, takes like months and months of like studying and reading stuff to be able to like really speak their language and, and connect to that. But it's uh, um, yeah. I, I guess what I learned is that like boundaries between disciplines are kind of artificial and human made, so we can organize things nicely and have departments and, and colleges and universities. Like departments of like art or art uh, or uh, um, theater or math, whatever else, but they're all kind of uh, branches or uh, uh, off of the same the same tree trunk. And uh, yeah, it's it's uh, sort of fun to uh, think outside of those lines and, and make up your own field or make up your own discipline um, just by thinking about what you like the most and uh, trying to combine it with other things that you like. <laughs> Does anybody else have any more questions? No? Okay, what do y'all say, Chase? Can we give a round of applause?